Welcome to Biomeda United Methodist Church. I'm Reverend Nan Nelson, pastor. We're so glad that you could be with us today. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, we're thankful for this time to spend in your presence, this time to be in holy fellowship with you, to share our praises and our joys with you and entrust our prayer requests and our concerns to you for your care. We're thankful that we can hear your word read, hear your word proclaimed as we worship together in this space, in this time. Be with us now as we worship in Jesus' name. Amen. If you have a prayer request or if you have a praise or a joy that you'd like to share with us, please put it in a comment on our YouTube channel, Biomeda United Methodist Church, or on our Facebook page, Biomito UMC. Or better yet, send us an email at Biomito United Methodist Church at ARUMC.org. If I spell it, it's B A Y O U M E T O. United Methodist Church at A-R-U-M-C dot O-R-G. We hope that you will worship with us on Sunday and be with us for a time of hope and prayer for our world on Thursdays. Beginning on Sunday, March 6th, our virtual worship will be live at 8.30 Central Standard Time. I hope you join us then. We'll be in the same space and welcome you here. Now, join me in the call to worship, which is found in the Old Testament of your Bible in Psalms, Psalm 99. Psalm 99 in the book of Psalms in the Old Testament. Psalms is found about halfway through the entire Bible. Psalm 99. Follow along. Read along with me, beginning in verse 1. The Lord reigns, let the nations tremble. He sits enthroned between the cherubim, let the earth shake. Great is the Lord in Zion, he is exalted over all the nations. Let them praise your great and awesome name, he is holy. The king is mighty, he loves justice. You have established equity. In Jacob you have done what is just and right. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his footstool. He is holy. Moses and Aaron were among his priests. Samuel was among those who called on his name. They called on the Lord and he answered them. He spoke to them from the pillar of cloud. They kept his statutes and the decrees he gave them. Lord our God, you answered them. You are to Israel a forgiving God, though you punish their misdeeds. Exalt the Lord our God and worship at his holy mountain, for the Lord our God is holy. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. As is our tradition in this virtual service, it's now time for us to be in silent prayer after which I will pray. And at the end of my prayer, I will invite you to recite the Lord's Prayer along with me. If you will now bow in silence. How great thou art, O Lord, how great thou art. You know our every need. You know every need of our world. You know all that's going on around our world, not only in the United States, but in the Ukraine and Russia that is persecuting the people of Ukraine to overthrow. We pray, Lord, that it is your will that 
the persecution and the overthrow are ceased. As we lift up the people of the Ukraine who are fleeing for their lives for a place of safety to avoid being harmed. We lift them up. We know that your children are there and they're worshiping and they're singing songs of praise to you and they are praying to you to deliver them from this horrible situation. And Lord, we know that the Ukrainians love you. Many of them know you and follow you. And they know that your love is the greatest gift, a gift to all of us before we were born, preparing the way for us before we were born and when we were born, providing your son Jesus, giving him as a baby in a manger who grew to adulthood and taught us how to live in relationship with you and follow him. And as we follow him, we receive your transformational love that changes us as we become more like you. Your son Jesus gave his life on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins, and we're forever thankful. No matter the color of our skin, our ethnicity, or where we live, or how much money we make, or what we do for a living, you love us all the same, and we give you thanks. We give you thanks for raising him, your son, on the third day after he was crucified, dead, and buried you resurrected him on the third day, giving us eternal life with you, and we are forever grateful. And Lord, we continue to lift up all those who are in harm's way every day, reaching out to care for us, the military, the law enforcers, the firefighters, the first responders, healthcare personnel, and missionary teams who are going in to help care for the Ukrainians wherever they may be, for our United States military that is over there in Poland, there to help. Lord, we just, we just pray that you stop this war so that we may become one with you. And Lord, I lift up the leader of Russia, Vladimir Putin, and pray that he seeks you, that he overcomes his need for power and realize that you are the one with the power and you always have been and you always will be because you're ever, you're never changing. You're the same yesterday, today, and tomorrow. And we pray that Putin's heart is softened and stops this war. And Lord, you know the concerns besides the people of Ukraine and the war and all of the poverty and all of those who are sick and all our loved ones. You know the needs of each of them and the names on our prayer lists. We entrust them all to your care. As we pray together the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Our scripture reading today comes from the Gospel of Luke. It is found in the ninth chapter of the Gospel of Luke, which is in the New Testament of your Bible. And it's the ninth chapter, the 28th through the 36th verse. If you want to follow along, I'm beginning in verse 28. About eight days after Jesus had spoken and predicted his death, he said he took Peter, John, and James with him, and they went up onto a mountain to pray. 
And as he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Or as in the Gospel of Mark, it says dazzling white. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which he was about to bring to fulfillment in Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it's good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He didn't know what he was talking about. When he was speaking, a cloud appeared and covered them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son whom I have chosen. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. And the disciples kept this to themselves and didn't tell anyone at that time what they had seen. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me again? Oh God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in your sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. What happened on that mountain was what's known in religious circles and church circles of the transfiguration. And that simply means change. Transfiguration means change. We're familiar with change, aren't we? The way of things, good or bad, all around us. Change of weather from sunshine to sleet to right freezing rain to snow to sunshine to tornadoes to wind to blizzards to heat of the summer and the fall. The changing of the school year, the changing of the seasons, the changing in the news, pandemics and war all at the same time in our world today. Even the air we change, breathe changes, and so does the water we drink. All we need to do is turn around and things are different. And even though we say that we hate change, it's part of our reality. It's part of our reality every day, and we can't escape it. For it happens to all of us, each one of us, we're constantly in the process of shedding the old self and putting on the new. We change too. We change with the times. We change with the weather. We change with our circumstances. We may not want to, but we adapt. We're flexible. We're human. We can do that. But that's the physical reality as well as the spiritual, re spiritual one. Did you know that every minute about 300 million cells are replaced in our bodies every minute? We are in a constant state of change, shedding cells at an amazing rate, being replaced with new ones. Do you seem different? Do you feel it happening? I don't. But wait a minute, and we will be different. In a minute, we'll all be different. Over 300 million cells will have changed in our bodies. In one minute. Our scripture lesson today is about change, but not in the way we may expect. Neither is it a call to change for the better, nor it is, is it a call to turn around or repent passage. It's neither of those. It's something altogether different. Luke wrote in verse 28 that the appearance of his face changed. His appearance we're talking about Jesus. He didn't look like what they were used to seeing. He looked different. He looked more as though he were transfigured as he had changed. That word transfigured even sounds more holy than the word changed, doesn't it? So what happened on that mountain? Six to eight days, the 
gospel writers don't agree on the exact same number of days and where they wrote about this, but it was several days, about a week after a conversation Jesus had about telling the disciples that he was going to suffer and die. Whatever happened in difficult new words lose the meaning of what I read in Luke. The appearance of Jesus' face changed. What they were used to seeing they no longer saw and something they had never seen before suddenly became evident to their frightened eyes. And what did they see? It was not describable. It was indescribable. But it was Moses and Elijah who enlightened them. We don't know how the disciples knew who they were, but they did. Yet they were there representing the law and the prophets, the heights of the church. The heights of the church's chosen people, the heights of God's chosen people. They were there to support Jesus, to draw attention to him, the one who was the word of God, who was the presence of God. Emmanuel, God with us. This change is told in all four Gospels, but Luke is the only one who spoke about the conversation among the glowing figures on the mountaintop. Did you realize that Moses, Elijah, and Jesus all had the same glowing experience? It was in what I read just briefly. It said they were glowing in glory. In glory, seeing glory, what happened on that mountain for James and John and Peter was seeing glory, seeing glory. And yet the reason for the conversation on the mountain was to talk about Jesus's departure, Jesus's exodus. Now we'd be checking our, now we'd be checking our ticket if we were thinking about a departure. We'd be checking our ticket We'd be reviewing the security details if we were flying, such as no liquids, removing all the metal from our pockets and taking off our shoes. Now Moses knew about taking off shoes, didn't he? Remember in Exodus chapter three, verse 25, Moses was standing by the burning bush with the voice of God speaking from the bush. And God said, do not come any closer. Take off your sandals for the place where you are standing is holy ground. The place where I am standing is holy ground while I'm speaking to you, and I have no sandals, no shoes on my feet, because the ground beneath me is holy when I'm preaching. Moses knew about exoduses and departures. He knew what it was to change everything he knew and everything he was, even for an uncertain future. It's what was happening on that mountain. He knew how to embrace that change, even through fear. And that's what we're doing in our world now. That's what we're doing in our world now. We're embracing change. But on that mountain, they were embracing change in that conversation, embracing the change and trusting in the one who brings us through but more than that, who calls us to change and to become more, to become more like Jesus, that transformational love that I talked about in my prayer. Peter was always getting his foot in his mouth, and he got it, his foot in his mouth again on the mountain when, because he was against change, he wanted them to stay there, all of them, Jesus and Moses and Elijah and Peter and James and John, he wanted them to set up camp and have tents for Moses, Elijah, and Jesus. He was still holding out for that moment, maybe perhaps because he was fearful of what would happen next. You know, when we don't know what's going to happen next, we get fearful too sometimes, don't we? But he wanted to hold, Peter wanted to hold on to that moment because he knew what the, he didn't know what the next moment would bring. Perhaps Peter just wanted affirmation that what they understood should never change. 
But the voice from the cloud said, this is my son, my chosen, listen to him. When you hear the word metamorphosis, what is your first thought? What is your first thought when you hear metamorphosis? Does that take you back to science class where you learned about a butterfly emerging from a cocoon through the process of metamorphosis? Our change, metamorphosis means change, or maybe a metaphoric rock that has melted by the heat of the earth's core and is flowing from one form to another. Here's a question for you. Which is the true form of the rock or the creature? The cocoon, the butterfly, the rock before it melts or the rock after it melts? Or is it, is it before or after? Are both a part of the whole? Or is it a matter of perspective and a matter of timing? It seems that where we are and when we are is what allows us to see one truth as opposed to another. What happened on that mountain was a revealing of the essence of the one who was changed, not about physical change. Jesus became who he was on that mountain. Now stay with me. Jesus became who he was on that mountain, even though he was who he was as he climbed up the mountain, and as he climbed, climbed down the mountain. Because Jesus is the same yesterday. He's the same today. And he's the same tomorrow. He's ever present. In the fullness of his whole being. But us. We only see the part of him that we need in any given moment. And the reality of that is Jesus Christ. We get used to what, to that, and it becomes familiar to us in the way that we meet and see Jesus in the moments of our lives. Yet occasionally, once in a while, we get a glimpse of something bigger, something deeper, something more intense. Every now and then, we hear a word that echoes in our souls for weeks or maybe forever. Every now and then a tear comes to our eye as we stand on the face of glory. Every now and then a lump comes to our throat as we encounter the deaths of love and sacrifice. Every now and then we climb a mountain and see what it is that we're following in what was most often the darkness of life. Every now and then we move a little closer, grow a little taller, and listen a little better. Every now and then we catch a glimpse of the appearance of his face, and all we see is love. Love so deep the world that he would die for the object of his love on that cross, on that rock. Love is so powerful. Everything is changed by that love. Love that goes on and on, even when our faith fades, because in him we see a love that never ends. A love that never ends. See the glory. We see that glimpse of glory every once in a while. A tear, a lump in our throat, a death or a sacrifice. We see the love, the glory. Remember the voice in the cloud saying, this is my son, my chosen Listen to him, listen to him, and see the glory. Will you pray with me? Almighty God, help us to faithfully listen to your son, your chosen. 
Lead us and guide us in the paths you want us to follow. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Receive the benediction. Go now in peace. Go now in peace. May the love of God surround you everywhere, everywhere you may go. And may you glimpse the glory this week. Amen. Thank you for being here for virtual worship on this day. Remember, next Sunday on March the 6th, the virtual worship service will be live at 8.30 on YouTube by Omida United Methodist Church. And at the end of the service, it will be posted on the Facebook page by Omida UMC. Until we meet again, I'm Reverend Nan Nelson, pastor of Biomedia United Methodist Church. Until we meet again, may God bless you.